Boom! So good evening, you yeah, absolute legends. Um, thank you so much for being here. We are live right now. It's five past nine. Getting on for five past nine. Um, well, what? Three minutes past nine, to be precise. UK time. We do this every single Monday night. If you're listening on the Ats on This TV audio experience, if you're listening to the replay, or you're watching the replay on Facebook or YouTube, come and join us live one Monday. Uh, I was just saying before... I started the broadcast properly that, yeah, we go live every single Monday night on the Facebook page, um, facebook.com forward slash act on this TV. If you are an actor, if you want to land more, you know, auditions, ultimately more roles on TV, you want to be part of these broadcasts, part of the wider act on this TV community. If you've no idea what acts on this is, and maybe you've stumbled across this broadcast for the first time because you've joined the email list recently, um, acts on this TV is this website here. For those who are watching the video, you'll see it on your screen on the audio experience. I'm just showing the website now acts on this TV. Uh, basically every single week, um, I sit down with a top casting director, a top agent, a top actor, a top writer, a top producer, um, um, the biggest names in the industry, literally the biggest names, BAFTA winners, Oscar winners, the biggest names in TV. Um, and we chew the fat, basically, on how to land more auditions, how to get in the room with these top casting directors, how to, you know, really propel your acting career forward way faster than um, most actors do, basically. A lot of actors just sit there waiting to be discovered. That is absolutely not how you get anywhere in this industry. Um, so I'm going to recap tonight on our last member-only Zoom call, which was last week. We had um, an incredible casting director, top TV casting director, Amy Jackson on the site. She's been working with loads of other casting directors over the years. She's now got gone out on her own, set up her own solo casting director business effectively. But previously, she was working with Amy Hubbard, casting things like Apple's Suspicion. Massive, massive show. Um, you know, she's also uh, done The Outlaws, Stephen Merchant's comedy. Um, I mean, over the years, so, so much. Week before that, we had Rashenda Sandal, uh, Line of Duty and Doctor Who actress. Week before that, we had an incredible podcast, actually, on Mindset. These are all over on on this.tv. Um, and I'll show you in a minute what we've got coming up once we've recapped on Amy's session. We've got so much coming up with, you know, some of the biggest casting directors, um, agents and, and actors in the business. If you want to check out everything that's going on, you can do that, actonlist.tv forward slash live. Check out the live schedule. Go and watch the previews on the site of all of this stuff that you've missed. The recordings are in the members area. You've literally got the last 12 months of, of sessions in the members area on actonlist.tv for you to um, you know catch up on if you're only just discovering the site and you're only just you know getting involved. It doesn't mean because you weren't there live on any of the sessions we've previously done that you have to you know forego the information on those. You get access to it all in the members area right now. Um, so before I uh, I dive into Amy's session, let me just have a look in the comments on uh, Facebook, see what's been uh, been going down, and then we'll uh, we'll get stuck in and we'll have a nice chat tonight. Shiv says just been auditioning lately, so uh, as the usual routine, I'm continuously being submitted for high profile jobs. Are you um, so you've been you you've been submitted? Are you, are you landing auditions for those jobs, Shiv? Is that what you're saying? Because if you are, then that's amazing, man. Hopefully, uh, it's only a matter of time until you land one of those. Esther, good evening. I noticed you've got your... Um, I don't know if I've, I've been live since you got your first job in Doctors, I think it is, isn't it, Esther? Let us know. But congrats on that once again. That's amazing. Jackie, how are you doing? Thanks for being here. David took a two-month break. Um, oh, after my sister-in-law's passing. David, I'm so sorry, mate. I've not seen... Yeah, I've not seen you on the live calls for a bit, but come and join us if you're uh, if you're up to it. We've got some great calls coming up this week um, and next week. So um, sorry to hear that, mate, but I hope uh, everybody is, you know, is getting through that's sending you lots of light and positivity and strength dude um so yeah amy jackson incredible session last week i'm just going to play out a two minute little mashup basically um of what you missed if you weren't on that session like i say uh these private zoom calls happen every single week you get to jump on camera have a chat with our guests um ultimately get the inside knowledge of you know just the stuff that no one else is talking about ultimately how you get in front of um you know, the biggest casting directors to get these opportunities to land the roles in the shows that you want to be a part of. So here's two minutes of, a, of what was like over a 90 minute chat um, with Amy. And then there's one other thing that I've pulled out of this chat that I just want to hammer home again tonight. Just it's something that comes up a lot, but it's something that I'm like, actors really need to be focusing on this thing this year. But here's a little two minutes um, and then we'll we'll recap in a sec. A total legend of casting, fresh from co-casting Stephen Merchant's The Outlaws and Apple TV Plus smash hit Suspicion, is casting director Amy Jackson. Amy, you're back after a two-year hiatus. How are you? I started as an actor in your yeah. shoes way back when um, and did that for a bit and decided, you know, it wasn't quite... Um, I, I just didn't have the patience as much as, as you guys probably have. And then I 
just worked my way up working first of all with Sasha Robertson in commercials yep um which she trained me up to learn all the basics about casting and then I was with Amy Hubbard that was my kind of next thing was there for three years three or four years and now we're here I'm gonna play a little bit of the outlaws out this is me you're over here Greg this is you why am I the used condom? Because you're doing it in front of spunk and that's a compliment. Mm. Now pay attention. As soon as we finished season one, they commissioned season two without it coming out yet. No way, I so, didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. But Stephen Merchant was so keen to get local Bristolians. If you were an actor wanting to get on your radar, how would you do it? You know, there are always emails and you can email and, and that's a way to do it. But I'd love for you guys to kind of suggest and to know what you are and to be sure sure and strong of your casting type what things do you like to see from actors when it comes to tapes and, and in the room i just need to see that character in front of me and to not even i don't want to see the acting do you think the industry is maybe moving more towards discovery of new people we're not going to have a budget that can allow for all of those characters to be completely yeah. kind of big famous yeah. mimosa names, you know? I was just wondering um, what your approach is to um, casting people who are um, a neurodiverse or have disabilities and things. You have to believe in yourself and believe in everything that you're doing and your talent and, and that you should be there. Yeah. Boom, act on this.tv if you want to get a membership and get access to that session, literally the full session right now, instantly. Um, plus get invites to sessions like that every single week with the biggest names in the business. Um, it was an awesome session with Amy. If you were on it and you're here watching live now, do let me uh, do let me know. Also, one thing I will just say tonight in terms of if you're watching on Facebook, I've noticed Facebook servers are sometimes lagging a little bit. So apologies if um, if there's any sort of uh, sort of you know stuttering and starting of my uh, my video or my audio tonight. I just got a little message from Facebook saying they might be having some uh, some issues. So bear with us if uh, if that does happen because it lo all looks good my end. It should uh, it should resolve. Um, but yeah, let us know if you were on that session with um with Amy and there's one thing that she mentioned in that trailer there around casting type that I just really 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 want to hammer home to people tonight because I think it's it's one of the critical missing pieces of people's outreach to casting directors where they don't really understand their own casting type it's almost sort of like I don't know actors resign themselves to being confused about where they fit and they think that's all right and it's like actually that's like the initial building block in this industry of like succeeding because then when you really know what you are as a product your type where you fit the shows you fit into you can very 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 specifically target the casting directors of those shows as opposed you know to what a lot of actors do is they just reach out to everybody with a blanket email that's the same basically saying yeah consider me for anything um, and they're not really sending anything that's solution focused to that casting director. They're putting all of the onus and all of the work into the casting director's hands to go, can you figure me out? Can you figure me out, please? And just put me in your show wherever you think I should fit because I don't have a clue where I actually fit myself. Um, so I want to just play a clip out where Amy expands on that a little. I will just say, Stegan Waney, mate, congratulations on the uh, on the new arrival. I know you just had a baby in the last couple of days. Um He's in the house. I've not spoke to you for ages, Steve, but hopefully uh, all is good with you, mate. And um, you better start getting plenty of acting work now. What What's the statistics on how much a child costs you between zero and 18 years old? <laughs> Isn't it like hundreds of thousands of pounds? So um, best of luck, that mate. Um, get some, you need to get some big acting jobs and uh, and hopefully you can uh, you can pay for everything. But congrats, man. Really happy for you, mate. It's uh, it's amazing. So um, good good luck with with it all, and I hope you get you get some sleep. Um, particularly if you've got cell tapes and auditions to do. But um, very very exciting. Um, and I also think you know what I think. I mean, I can't speak from experience because I don't have any kids, but. A lot of people think having a bit of time out, you know, to raise a family is like them turning their back on their acting career. It's not at all. I say this all the time, but I'm like, there's going to be such an emotional unlock, unlock for you, Steve, and your, um, you know, and your, uh, your missus as well, because I don't think she's an actress, is she? But, you know, for you, in terms of bringing that emotional, I don't know, that sort of next level that you probably feel now being a father, you know, there'll be, there'll be things you've gone through, you know, in the past sort of, you know, nine months that, 
you can't go through any other way bar actually you know discovering you're going to be a father and then being a father that you can then bring into your work and if you need a bit of time off to just you know sort of like paternity leave or whatever um i don't feel it's turning you back on your career i feel it's just making you a better actor because it's unlocking parts of your emotional range that you could never unlock a different way so um yeah sometimes just for anybody out there parent wise or anything like that or people thinking of starting a family it's all good don't be too harsh on yourself thinking oh i'm gonna you know have to have time away from the industry like when you're becoming a better person you're becoming more emotionally intelligent you're becoming a way better actor so uh, congrats once again mate um i'm loving uh this says angela uh this career only started this few years ago i'm 60 plus lady and the work is coming in started out as an extra now getting speaking roles but i want more i'm loving it angela oh you got so much time on the clock and congrats for attacking this industry uh, over 60 we've got so many people in the in the acts on this community who have done this huge shout out to a lot of them um who just in the last year yeah there's i, I run a, a program called first tv roll fast track um i'm just taking a group of students through it now and i'll be launching it again at the end of this year but lots of people decided maggie evans shout out to you don't know if you're watching tonight but just decided at 60 to go you know what i'm a teacher but i'm gonna retire and and maggie's son said mom like what would you have done if you could have done anything, if you weren't a teacher. And she said, oh, I would have been an actress. And he said, well, why don't you just go for it? And she's like, no, no, I'm too old. Um, and then she went for it. And then within a year, she landed a first TV role opposite David Tennant and Dan Ryan in a big TV show um, that's coming out soon. It's not even out yet. Um, but like, what a result. And like, just what tenacity and like, just courage that I think it takes to, to do that after a, a lifetime of a, an existing career. Um, hats off to anyone. Yeah, there's no age limit on this industry. Um, good on you, Angela. I, you know, can't wait till you're uh, you're getting even more work. And how you doing? Thanks for being here. Uh, Rich is here as well. Gary just back from LA. Look at him dropping that in. All right, Gary. Hope LA went went well, mate. Josh is in the house as well. Um, thanks for uh, for being here. So this other this other clip that I want to play out from Amy's session. Yeah, all about casting type and just how freaking important it is. And I would love it if you were on this live tonight. To just if you could if you could basically sum up your casting type in one sentence, right? Just just one sentence. If I was in a lift with you and said, Oh, see, so you know, what's your casting type? What kind of roles do you play? How would you describe it in one sentence? So when you're sending emails out to casting directors within pretty much the first or the second sentence of your email, you can tell that casting director, you know, basically who you are, where you fit, the kind of work you usually do. And if you can't do it, it's totally cool. It just is highlighting something that you really need to get clear on um, in order to just be more useful when you are sending stuff out to casting directors. But here's just a little bit of Amy Jackson talking about casting type. If you were an actor wanting to get on your radar, how would you do it? There are always emails and you can email and, and that's a way to do it. I think giving me the information, like being able to kind of show a showreel or a self-tape or also kind of know where your casting is. I get a lot of people saying, I don't really know where I'm castable, where, where I'm meant to be cast. Like that's not necessarily my job, I guess. And like no, my, my job is to ca cast you and, and, and to, so obviously to, to, to kind of, I would be able to look at something um, and, and kind of know where you fit, but I'd love for you guys to kind of suggest and to know what you are and to be sure and strong of your casting type, I guess. Um, and just just show, demonstrate that for me in, in a quick link of a self tape or or a, see, a short scene or a monologue or anything, um, just so I can quickly be like, oh yeah, quick link, look, or even embed it in the email um, and, and see it. And, and that can go into a kind of, you know, certain category or whatever. You're not boxing yourself into those those things. You're just saying, you're, you're giving some examples, you know. I'm, you might have an authoritative presence to, yeah. your, to you. And so, you know, there are so many lawyer, barrister, uh, judge, like all in, uh, especially in Amy, Amy Harvard, Harvard's things, actually, in terms of factual dramas, we used to cast a lot of police uh, and, and, and authoritative roles in all of those so there are so many of those roles around so could if you are a, a naturally authoritative person then put those things down you know think about what you as a genuinely as a person are like and just kind of go from there because it's never going to be too far away from who you are as a person i want someone who is not going to reach too far to be that character i want them yeah. want it to feel genuine and real and close to them so 
So don't feel like you have to put yourself into a really specific thing that you might never play, you know? Just just be realistic with your casting type, I think, as well. Acts on this.tv to, um, yeah, to access that full session with Amy. Um, what she what she says there, I have heard out of the lips, out of the mouths of dozens of the top, 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 top TV cast directors that we've had on uh, at Sonless.tv over the last 12 years. So many of them, particularly in TV, theatre is a bit different, but in TV they're looking for actors who really understand themselves, know who they are, and they bring themselves to the, well, basically, you know, they bring themselves to the role, not the role to them. If that, is that Does that make sense? Or it basically not playing too far away from who you are. So a role comes up as this person, such and such a thing. It's like, how would you play that? Not sort of like going, right, I'm going to transform myself completely. You know, that can kind of come on later in your career if you want to play really against type and suddenly, you know, a huge movie studio is giving you an opportunity to do that. But for so many actors, they end up very much playing a character very similar to themselves um, in real life. Um, so it is very, very natural. Amy doesn't want to see the acting. She wants you to be the character. She, you know, And the only way to do that really is to not necessarily put on a character. It's to bring yourself to that character, but know what it is that you specifically bring. So I'm going to have a look down the comments here and let's see and those people listening on the on the on the replay you know just sort of like think to yourself how would you pitch yourself in one sentence to a casting director you know and 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 freaking specific as well because i bet the people who have written them here i could make you go more specific to make it even more sort of like just easy for cast directors to really get a get a gist of who you are but even before they've, they've watched your show reel because how you pitch yourself as well don't forget is is it's really going to be the thing that makes them click on your show reel or not? If you're like, yeah, you know, and it's really generally you don't really know who you are, they're not going to click on your reel because it's like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, it's, it's too hard work that I'm just going to. I'll put that to one side. Maybe I'll come back to it later. Chances are they might not. Whereas if you really have a grip of who you are and you can describe that in the first sentence of your email, they might just be looking for that in their project right now, and then they're going to go and click on your reel like straight away. So James says, comedy relief slash sidekick. It's a good start, man, but I think you can be even more specific. And you can be more specific by putting things into your casting type, like your age, the gender you identify as, uh, your ethnicity, um, you know, and then that would be, you know, the comedy relief sidekick, you know, kind of thing. But then also, you know, jobs that it looks like you can do as well. I know those people who've done the fast track course with me will understand this as well. Um, you know, you'll hear me say this like forever more. Um, but that's how you can be more, you know, more specific. Steve got a really like, this is a really nice way to describe you, mate, because I know you quite well. He's put Scally with a good heart. Um, you know, that's really good. But you could then also, you know, again, add in, you know, your playing age into that, you know, add in, um, you know, well, I mean, you know, things like, you know, say like the gender you identify as, job roles that it looks like you could do. So Scally, I mean, Steve embraces that and Steve plays, you. <laughs> Steve plays as like the best Scally. You, you are, if I needed a Scally, Steve, I would come at you probably over anybody else that I know. I don't know anybody who plays that lovable rogue kind of character, the Scally with a good heart, better than you and you are funny as well. So comedy-wise, Brassic, which you've done, you know those kind of shows, Corey, where you know you played the uh, the knife guy who pulled the knife out on David Platt. That is kind of your casting type, man. But it is Scally with a good heart. I completely agree with. But you could be more specific by putting your playing age into that, putting your ethnicity into that as well. Nick suited an official, so yeah, if you if you if you naturally play the authoritative types, um, again, you might want to put your playing agent at that. You know, twenty five to thirty. Uh, you know, authoritative suit effectively. That gives you a really clear indication of who you are as an actor. And, you know, that covers all bases then across, you know, coppers, you know, businessmen, lawyers, potentially doctors, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, Joe's got there. What have you put there, Joe? Caring, I think, uh, professional, medical. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've, I've seen the, the scene that you shot as a nurse. I think that does suit you. Um, that sort of stuff. Again, you can be more specific with the age. Um, authoritative roles, Michelle Port. I use my USP when contacting CDs because Michelle was in the police. For how many years was it, Michelle? Was it was it your whole career before you decided you were going to go into acting? It was it was a long time, wasn't it? And anybody, honestly, there's another uh, Ash. I don't know if you're watching tonight. Another member of the Acts on This TV community who's just joined last week. 
Um, Dylan Elliott, by the way, I don't know if you're watching, but I've just noticed you've signed up for a membership. So if you're watching because of this and that's why you just signed up, thank you so much for being part of the community. We've got some cracking stuff coming up. Uh, but yeah, Ash, um, he joined the community recently. It was only on, on the social call we held on Saturday for members on Zoom that I found out he was in the police. Anybody who's got real life experience of police, medical, law, anything at all, make sure, God, you are putting that like in the subject line of your email as well. You know, I would be writing, you know, X, you know, I don't know, 40 year old actor, you know, Manchester actor, X policeman, X policewoman, whatever it is in the subject line. Cause it makes you so, it's such a USP. It makes you so much more interesting than, you know, someone who's just basically decided like me to just be an actor the whole life. <laughs> I've not got anything quite as interesting to go, yeah, I was in the police force for 20 years. I arrested loads of people and was involved in all of these investigations. That's so good for people who are casting police dramas because you can bring an authenticity to that role that I could never bring because I've never read the Miranda warning to somebody in real life and actually arrested somebody. I've done it loads of times on TV, but you could probably do it better than me and more authentically because you probably did it dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Um, James says, I was in a workshop with Emma Sylvester yesterday and she said they are casting 11... Day player roles a week. You know what I mean, mate? What do I keep saying? There's only 3,000 casting opportunities in serial drama every year. Actors who don't understand the business of the business are just leaving so much money, so many roles, just so much on the table, man, because they're like, oh, I just want to be in line of duty. Yeah, so does everyone else. And they're casting 20 roles every 16 months, right? You're missing out so much. Uh, James says, the characters I'm mostly cast for are comedy idiot relief characters, the dim sidekick, over-the-top embarrassing dad, <laughs> who's a big kid at heart. I can also play a plethora of day player roles and have been cast as a war. Yeah, James, man, you you need to give yourself some more credit. So James got a role in Doctors recently as a delivery driver. You had a line in that. And you were like, you, when you were posting, it, you were prefacing it with, I know it's not much, I know it's not much. Mate, it is much. You, it's your first kind of TV role, dude, where you're speaking you know, on a show that's going to be seen by hundreds of thousands of people. Actors need to be kinder to themselves. Like, you've, you, you know, you've got to start, like, I think it's a British thing. Is it a British thing, do you think, where we just talk ourselves down and it's always kind of like, oh, well, you know. I How many times do people first TV role, they go, oh, I had a little part. It was only a little part. And they'll, it's almost like they want to say that before even what the part was. Um, it's a huge step, man. Oh, it looks like like Facebook's internet connection is going a bit dodgy again. Bear with me a second. It's it's just come up again. There's a notification going. They're having connectivity issues. You should still hear my audio. Just bear with us. Let us know in the chat if it's good. The recording won't make any difference if you're watching the recording on YouTube because I'm recording it at my end. But um, let me know if uh, there's any issues. That's just Facebook. Come on, man. You're a billion dollar company. You should be able to, you should be able to cope with with a few people broadcasting at the same time um let's have a look uh nat says caring nurse teacher mom etc yeah again just just adding you know adding your your age your playing age basically it doesn't have to be your real age keep your keep your playing age in tv down to five years as well theater you can probably get away with 10 but just keep it specific and down to five years okay it just means that you, you know and be realistic as well um but it means you're going to get the briefs through that are really genuinely suited to you. If you put a 10-year gap, you know, across, you're going to get a lot of briefs from Spotlight that, I don't know, you think you might think you can get away with, but I just think a lot of actors end up just putting too much time into putting themselves forward for roles that aren't that applicable. You could use that time better, basically, you know, introducing yourself to newer new casting or it says you've not introduced yourself to before and just getting those... I think I just think the more roles they can apply for, the more chance they've got of work. I know it might sound slightly incongruent with that, but I think the more specific you can be for the roles you do apply for, the more chance you've got of getting them because you're so right for it then, as opposed to trying to be everything to everyone. So Michelle, 23 years in the police. Wow. 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 That's crazy. Bloody hell. 23 years. As a policewoman, that's amazing. My whole career, Michelle says. I bet, you, Michelle, you could probably write. Do you write as well? Because Dan Gillings, another member of the community, he was uh, Great Manchester Police's youngest poli ever ever policeman. Um, and he was on some incredible cases. 
um, as a copper, and he's turned a lot of his real life experience into a drama that he's writing right now, and he's got quite a lot of interest from it. Um, so uh, I think there's probably some tales of 23 years in the police you could uh, turn into a short film, or you know, uh, I don't know, even more than that, you know, a three part, six part series or whatever. Look at Tony Schumacher who did it. Um, he was a copper. Uh, in Liverpool for many years and he wrote The Responder starring Martin Freeman and he wrote that I've got Tony coming on soon he wrote that with Martin Freeman in mind and he said he couldn't believe it when he was at the BBC and Martin Freeman was there going yeah I want to do your script you know Tony like was a you know not never really planning to be a writer was just a policeman well I'd say just a policeman a very good policeman with a lot of experience but yeah he turned his life his life uh, work into um well, his best work into into a TV show that's cracking and has been has been recommissioned for a second series. Can K, thanks for being here. Says so just joined live. Um, appreciate you being here. And how you doing? It's the strongest Asian female, twenty five to thirty. Um, yeah, I mean, like obviously, yeah, ethnicity. You know, is is going to make you stand out. You know, there's there's a million. Well, it's not a million, but there's definitely thousands of five foot ten you know brown haired white guys like me um basically but yeah you know east asian female if you've got any again any other things any other previous jobs or other experience in life that again it can be a usp that you bring to the table as well as that i think it's going to make you really really interesting as well gary i'm 50 are you 50 are you 50 there's no <laughs> gary are you 50 he's put i'm 50 but don't if i look 50 you don't look anywhere near 50 I had no idea you were 50, Gary. Freaking hell. I thought you were like late 30s. That's really interesting, man. You put there maybe late 30s, mid 40s. Yeah. I mean, crikey. Yeah, I would go 38 to 43. Definitely. Carer, son, still not sure what else. Experience of mental health issues. Good to put on there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in terms of, you know, if there were roles, I mean, look at, um, God, Jack Thorne, Jodie Comer just won a BAFTA for her appearance, I think, in uh, Jack Thorne's Help, the COVID drama. Um, obviously, all set around a care home. Um, you know, if you've got got experience of caring for people, whether that's one person or working in that environment, again, it's things that are just... Life experience is so valuable in this industry when you are writing and introducing yourself to casting directors because it's just going to make you stand out from the... I imagine it's so dull for a casting director to just get an email from an actor who's just graduated from drama school. Well, not not pooing on drama school. I went. But, um, you know, just the usual stuff. I think drama school, and I spoke to Amy Hubbard about this. Not Amy Hubbard, Amy Jackson. Because um, you know what I think of drama school? I think it's an absolute rip-off. Um, £47,000 for a three-year degree um, that teaches you nothing about the business. Um, it's why I set up Acts on this.tv. Um, 247 quid a year for 0.02% of the price of a, of a degree. If you can act, I can teach how to get jobs. Um, and that's legit. Like, look at my IMDb. I'm getting jobs. Um, but yeah, 47 grand is absolutely it's crazy. And Amy said, you know, her justification was like, look, you know what? There's merit in it. Of course there is. But it's churning out a very, a very specific type of actor from a very specific type of society that can put the 47 57 000 pound into their degree and come out at the end of it with absolutely no guarantee of work um so uh my point was yeah um what was my point <laughs> what was my point oh yeah just life experience being worth way more than just you know those emails that people will get going yeah i'm another graduate a very similar type of actor who's trained at a very similar type of place with a very similar type of life experience. Um, don't get too hung up on drama school. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not worth going. If you've got the money and you want to do that, do it. But I don't think it's remotely essential to work in the TV industry anymore. Um, so that's where life experience just makes makes your correspondence with anyone in the industry so much more interesting. You know, it really, really is. Um, you know, if you meet someone in the industry when you're out and about, I think the last thing they probably want to talk about is the industry. So whereas you're going, oh, yeah, you know, before I was an actor, I was a policewoman for 23 years. I'd go, oh, my God, tell me, what was the craziest case you ever investigated? And then you end up talking about that, and you go, oh, my God, this person's, like, got so much more to them. XRAF, says, Kat, yeah, says Kate, in dental branch. What, dentistry for the RAF? I mean, I mean, that's insane. That in itself is crazy and, like, just super interesting to me. People in, in jobs think, oh, my job's not interesting because it's their job. To everyone else, I promise you it's interesting um that's uh that's that's again really interesting you know sarah how you doing says big update i got an agent last tuesday yes sarah 
Thank you so much for everything that you did for me. I wanted to ask you any advice on how to make the relationship with the agent even better to achieve common goals. Yeah. So if you didn't have when you when you signed, you know, a little bit of a 15 minute action plan session where you're like, right, okay, how are you, you know, seeing me right now? You know, what do you think are the first kind of jobs I should be aiming for? And, you know, and who would those jobs be with in terms of which casting directors would you, you know, are you going to be putting me in front of which casting directors do you have the best relationships with? Um, and almost, you know, figure out a plan of how you can work together to target those, you know, those casting directors. If your agent is like, Sarah, I really see you, you know, very strong in like, you know, a period drama style thing, a Bridget and thing. And you're like, well, I have nothing like that on my show reel. You know, I want to get in front of Kelly Valentine Hendry, who casts that show. Um, then maybe you start looking to shoot, you know, a self taper, uh, you know, or if you've got the resources, a show you'll see around that kind of thing. So again, it's self awareness. What we've been talking about on this broadcast tonight, it's about understanding where you fit into the industry and going: Is my shop window, my spotlight profile, effectively, is it? You know, I'm a proud of it. Is it really in alignment with who I really am? Or is there stuff on there that, you know, is not my casting type at all? I did it because it was a student film and I just wanted the experience. But actually looking at it, you know, the production values aren't that good and it's not really me. Get rid of all that all that stuff, you know, start going, right, how can I get my marketing material together that really shows me off to the best of my ability? Have a chat with your agent and then it's like, right, you know, you reach out to casting directors, says your agent does the same and then between you, you bring opportunities to the table. But I just think asking them how they want to be communicated with some agents like regular email, some agents even set up WhatsApp groups for their clients and stuff like that. It's like, how do you like to communicate? Ask them because every agent's different. Um, and then it's just about, you know, regular correspondence, you know, not all the time, maybe once a month, just checking in. You know, is there anything else that they think you could do around showreels, headshots, so they need updating, etc. But it's just looking at your your agent as a business partner. Ultimately, and so many actors sign with an agent and they're afraid of them. So they never reach out because they feel like not as important. It's like, oh, but the agent is the boss. You can see Facebook's doing that thing again now. Apologies. If it keeps doing it, she'll be back on. Um, but yeah, they don't want to... Um, you know, they don't want to sort of bother their agent, etc. So they end up staying silent. And then eight months goes by and they go, yeah, I think I need to change agents, Ross. And they go, when did you sign with them? Eight months ago. How many auditions have you had? Oh, well, like I've not really spoke to them. Well, that's why you've not had many auditions, you know. So, um, so yeah, just keep in regular contact, Sarah. And again, sorry for the connection stuff going on tonight, guys. Hopefully, let me know. Um, let me know on uh, on Facebook if it's still uh, if it's still all right. Gary says can still see you, so that's good. Can see and hear you, says James. Nice one. Um, some of us do look ten years younger. Indra, yeah, you do. You do look super young as well. So uh, if that's the case, there's nothing wrong with putting your playing age ten years younger. Just have it as a five year span, though. You know, to actually, you know, to to I don't know. I think it's on TV when the camera's you know a foot away from your face to be able to span a ten year gap you know, to go, well, I could be 30 or 40. I don't know. Is that realistic? I mean, this is my opinion, but, you know, you, you I don't know, to, to be able to look, for people to be able to go, I can't tell if you're 30 or 40. Um, I don't know. Like, I think I think normally when I'm guessing people's ages, I, tr I get it right generally within a five-ish year age gap. Except Gary, when you said you were 50, mate. I didn't think you were 50 at all. Um, definitely. And Michelle's got so many police stories. She says she doesn't write, but maybe in the future. Do it. 23 years as a financial advisor for David. So David, that would work so well when it comes to businessmen, you know, when it comes to playing those suited characters, when you've got real life experience of that sort of stuff. Um, definitely. So um, yeah, any sort of previous experience is, uh, is really, um, yeah, really valuable to tell, to tell people, you know, I'm missing quite a few comments here, guys. I'm sorry. Facebook's just like being a little bit slow with what it's putting through, but I know I've, uh, I've missed quite a, uh, quite a through rich and I, I love this. He says pompous 49 year old upper class official with strict manner and short views. <laughs> you sound like some sort of like army, army commander, rich, who just stands for no, no messing. What's Richard? What's your, um, what's your previous, have you been an actor all your life or what's your previous career? Um, or what do you do alongside alongside acting? That's re that's really interesting. Pompous forty nine year old. I love it. But those characters are great, and they come up a lot in stuff. You know, um, definitely. Uh, Indra's not forty. No, Indra, you're not. How old are you, Indra? You look like you're mid twenties or something like that. Um, age is a funny one. I remember when I used to work in retail, and I worked at a computer game shop for way too many years before I, I just acted full time. It just takes a long time to get established, and. Um, I used to have to ID people, you know, for computer games that were 18 years plus. 
Grand Theft Auto, stuff like that. And I used to really struggle uh, with people's ages when I was younger. I've got better now looking at, you know, I look at so many actors' headshots all day, every day, and people are like, what's my playing age and stuff? So I've got a lot better now. But I used to find it really hard, um, you know, to, to get people's ages down. I'd be IDing some people sometimes. They'd be like, I'm 29. I'm like, what? Really? You know, sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd let people buy stuff and like <laughs> realize halfway through I'd not ID them. ID them and they were like 17. I'm like, oh my God, you look about 23. So it is... Um, it is quite uh, quite difficult. Steve's got to go. Go and look after the little man, Steve. Uh, congrats once again, mate. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Um, Joanne worked at the Ministry of Defence. Look at all this stuff that's going on. That's just crazy. We've got so many interesting people in the community. I do I know nothing um, about um, about people's yeah previous jobs. Um, am I still? Yeah, I'm looking like I'm coming through fine on my Facebook, but I'm getting a message here saying that I'm not. So hopefully I am, or I'm pausing a little bit, aren't I? I think I'm pausing a little bit, but hopefully, hopefully it's still watchable, guys. Apologies once again. So Rich was a teacher, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical rep, and now runs his own business. Started acting again six years ago. That's wicked, man. Low, well, teacher, I would be getting yourself. Uh, over to casting directors like Michelle Smith for things like um, Waterloo Road. I'll be getting in touch with people like Beverly Keogh and David Martin for things like Ackley Bridge that require teachers. Hollyoaks, you know, have a high school there. Uh, I'll be getting in touch with people like Daniel Edwards again in case they're going to make more Heartstopper. If anyone's not seen Heartstopper on Netflix, it dropped a couple of weeks ago. Superb show. Uh, real kind of feel-good show. Um, but loads of teachers in it. Um you know, yeah, again, it's about going, right, what real-life experience can I bring to these shows authentically? Who's casting them? And it is your job. It's your job to know. I can help you, and, you know, we can all keep our ear at the ground of what's going on, but knowing the casting directors that cast those kind of roles will just pay dividends because, you know, they're the people you want to be putting yourself uh, in front of. Um, right, I'm going to dive out of the comments just for a couple of seconds because I want to show you guys what's coming up later this week. Any fans of The Crown? Day uh, Rich? Pompous forty nine year old, if you if you you know, sort of RP well spoken. Um The Crown, obviously, uh is Netflix is the Crown, is being cast right now, uh, by Robert Stern and cast and associate Kate Bone. If I go over to the schedule, uh, we've got Kate Bone um from Nina Gold's office and Robert Stern's office live with us this Thursday evening, the twelfth of May, twenty twenty two, at seven PM. So thirty minutes earlier than normal. Um, because Kate's schedule is uh is pretty crazy this week. So normally we'd start at half seven. We're starting at seven p.m. on Thursday night. So just be aware of that. Um, if you want to come and join us, um, we're going to be chatting all about uh Robert and Nina's office. Kate as a casting associate, their process. Um, they're obviously responsible that office for casting huge things over the years: Game of Thrones, Chernobyl, The Crown. Um, lots of really really big drama like like world class leading drama um we're going to be looking at how to get on their casting radar exactly how you do that um kate's you know going to be sharing her very best audition strategies um and members of acts on this obviously it's exclusive for members will get an opportunity i'll be bringing some people on camera to ask kate a question once a one um, if you want to be a part of that acts on this tv Get a membership um, and you'll get access to that. You can come and join us on these live you know, calls on a Tuesday or a Thursday night when we do them. Um, the week after that, oh, I just recorded a podcast, guys. It's dropping on the 17th for you guys um, with an incredible uh, actor turned director, Leon Lopez. Um, he's brilliant. You might have you know, been following on Twitter. Leon used to be in Brookside years ago. For any Brookside fans, he played uh, Jerome Johnson um, in that, if you remember. The family, Mick Johnson, if you remember. You know, he was Jerome's son. Uh, no, Mick's son, Jerome. Um, he's since gone on to... Oh, God, he's had an incredible career. He's done loads of, uh, loads of other shows, but he also released a single. He's a great singer. He's done Western Theatre, um, musicals. He's now a director. He's directed Hollyoaks, Coronation Street, Death in Paradise. He's just going on in three weeks' time to direct Mid summer murders for the bbc um, i've got a podcast dropping for you guys two hours he came around to my kitchen we had a chat for two hours uh, that's dropping on um, the 17th of may and then the week after that um, i've got a broadcast that i'm confirming this week for you but the week after that uh, we've got roland beckley from the bbc um casualty casting director uh, but he's also cast um eastenders over the years he, you know he's cast holby city shakespeare and hathaway father brown lots of the bbc in-house stuff he's one of the nicest people I mean, like, you know, when people say, oh, but they're really, really nice, like, and we say it about everybody, like, Roland genuinely is one of the nicest casting directors I've ever met in my life. But, like, they all are nice, but some are extra nice. 
And Roland is like extra nice. He's so cool. He signs off his emails, Roly. Um, incredible guy. He's going to be joining us, yeah, um, on the 21st uh, of May. Uh, no, 21st, the 31st, sorry, 31st of May um, at 7.30 p.m. Again, if you're looking for roles, you know, day play roles potentially in these serial dramas, Roland is someone you want to come and talk to. Just so much stuff coming up for members of Acts on this.tv. And this is going to cost you six quid a week, guys. It's the cheapest thing. Most people charge you 35 quid for one of these sessions. I give you seven a month for six quid a week, basically 24 quid a month, less than what everyone else is charging you for one of these sessions. I will give you seven because I don't like actors being ripped off and I'm an actor myself and that's what we do. That's how we roll. Um, so if you are not part of this community and you want to come and talk literally to the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers, and directors in TV every single week um, for cheaper than, I don't know, a large latte and a slice of cake, then um, do yourself a favor and become part of this uh, this community. So lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. Uh, looking forward to rolling. Beckley says Esther. Um, Natalie says it's my birthday that night. We'll try to get on camera. Natalie, if, you, if it's your birthday... Um, and I don't think you've been on camera lots, have you? Or have we ever spoken properly for long on, on one of these calls? If it's your birthday, I'll, I'll guarantee you. Don't everyone say it's the birthday, by the way. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to start actually checking if it is. If it's your birthday, Natalie, though, I'll bring you on camera. I'll, I'll guarantee it for you for your birthday. That's birthday privileges for uh, for anybody. Uh, Michelle, you have a good shoot, and I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon. Um definitely uh what else is going on yeah Nat just said it's a birthday so yeah we'll definitely do that natalie that's uh that's a given um 100 percent um what should we do for the next we've got 15 minutes if my connection is going to hold up let's do a little bit of q a um george is here oh george is here georgie what happened you got a self tape off daniel edwards i got your email i've not had a chance to reply um i think that was you wasn't it <laughs> i get so many emails i'm like i can't keep up but if you have massive 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 congrats um I think that was you. If it wasn't, you, something exciting happened, didn't you? I'm sure you sent me an email about it. Um, but that's wicked. Members of the community are just crushing it. Um, it's Sarah's birthday every other Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> I knew people would do that. I knew people would do that. I will be checking if people just blag me and say it's the birthday. I will double check your, all of your profiles online and look you up on the electoral roll just to make sure. And Georgie says, yeah, that was me. Georgie, but that's amazing. And it just shows you, like, honestly, like what, like I practice what I preach. I'm getting cell tapes. I'm booking roles. Everything that I say, do, I do myself and works. That's why I know it works. And everybody who then does that as well generally gets work. There's so there's more actors than ever in our community working on TV shows. There's more actors signing with agents and are emailing me so surprised. I'm like, why are you surprised? Like you're good and you followed all of the advice you get on the site, you did the work, you put in the hustle, you deserve it. Like, don't be surprised when you actually work hard, do things properly, and you get a result. Like, that is life. That is success. I think a lot of actors feel like, I don't know, it's impossible. It's hard. The world's against them. The industry's biased. It's not. Meritocracy is a real thing. Sometimes, yeah, you're going to get someone who gets lucky, and, like, in a way you go, oh, God, I don't see how they deserve what they got there. The universe is a bit funny like that sometimes. Most people I know, though, who are really successful, have bled out of their eyes to get there. And you've just got to be patient, guys. Those people at the start who were saying, I'm getting loads of tapes, I'm being submitted for stuff, and I'm not landing stuff, please don't like get disheartened and turn you back on the industry and go, oh, that's it, maybe I'm not good enough. You're getting the tapes, thus you are good enough. They wouldn't give you an audition opportunity or a self-tape request if you're not good enough, right? You've just got to stay in the game. And this is the downfall of so many actors. They get impatient, they get unhappy, they set their expectations way too high. I've been doing this a year. I should have had a job by now. Like, that's not how it works. Like, I promise you, if you're good and you know you have something to offer this industry, but you really know it, your time will come. And I see it. I'm very privileged running this community because I get those emails like of Georgie and those emails of people when they sign with agents and they land their first roles and they're in the dressing room and they're emailing me. Um, I see it a lot. Uh, so I can tell you, you know, I see the evidence of those people who stay the course, they get what they deserve and they're putting the work in. So patience and deploying it is, uh, you know, is really important. Lauren's here from the States. She said, yes, finally able to get on. Lauren, thank you for joining us. You, you've got on the night where Facebook's having some connection issues. So occasionally my pitch is probably going to be bugging out a bit. My audio is probably still going to be there, but apologies if, um, yeah, the connection's not not too great. The replay will be fine when I upload it to... Uh, YouTube or on the audio experience, you guys will have no no trouble with this at all. It's just unfortunately, 
a Facebook little uh, quirk this evening. I don't know what LinkedIn's like or um, or Twitter because I'm, I'm going out on those platforms as well. So apologies if it's happening there as well. I'm going through Facebook and then to all those other platforms. So it might be happening on every platform tonight, but apologies for that. Um, so yeah, uh, what am I saying? 11 minutes, let's go. What questions can we cover? Anybody got anything they want to ask? Anything that they just want to clarify, get a little bit of advice on? Anything to do with acting, self-taping? I don't know, headshots, voiceover. Um, I've been doing a lot of voiceover recently. It's another thing I would just urge people to take seriously, guys. Like, I don't want to boil it down to money, but like, it's just game changing. When you take voiceover seriously, you get a reel done properly. You understand again your vocal range, your casting type. You create a reel that's congruent with that, you know, and then you land a decent agent with that. It's just, and once you get work, God, work begets work in the voiceover industry because you build relationships with the studios and the engineers and they bring you back time and time and time again. Particularly if you do a good job and you're efficient because you're reliable and studio time costs a lot of money. Um, I'll try to get a lot of actors into into voiceover at the moment because I'm just like, it's untapped. But a lot of actors look at it wrong. They go, I want to do it on the side. Don't. Don't do it on the, when you can earn you know, four, five hundred, two and a half thousand, three thousand pounds an hour, depending on what you're doing. In voiceover, it's more lucrative than acting unless you're getting really, really big jobs. So anyone got any questions on voiceover? I'll happily take those tonight. Um, Jay, how are you doing? Says, how are you doing this evening? I am from the UK. Jay, we're in the UK. This is a UK stream, so it's good to uh, good to have you here, mate. Um, thanks for uh, for being here. Um, Esther says, it's been a long slog, uh, but finally got it. Yeah, I mean, like with you, Esther, I've seen it. You put the hustle in, you put the work in, you've showed up week on week to all of our stuff. You've been patient and then now you've got your TV role, you know, changes of agents, worked at your showreel, you've put their headshots, filming, all that sort of stuff. And now you're, you know, you're shooting your first role in the next few weeks and you deserve it, you know, so um, good on you. And you are very aware of your casting type. I've seen the stuff you've shot real wise and it really suits you. Um, so, uh, so good on you. Definitely. Uh, I'm missing a few comments here, guys. Apologies. Um, it's flying by at a really quick rate. Flogging away for voiceover says Nat buying kit and, on Bedalgo, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, Bedalgo is a really good uh, site for freelancers looking for their own voiceover work. Um, also, don't forget, as a member of Acts on This TV, guys, you get twenty five percent off GravyForTheBrain dot com, a membership to Gravy for the Brain. That's Peter Dixon's company, voiceover man. You know, Alexandra Buck um, for the X Factor. Um, he's a legend. He's done loads of features with me on Acts on This TV over the years. But in the members area, let me just show you quick for those people who aren't aware. And if you're watching the video, of this you'll see. Uh, if you go over to the members area, click into your premium membership, which is the purple product there, uh, and scroll all the way to the bottom past hundreds of hours of features with the biggest names in the business, uh, you'll find a section at the very, very bottom that says acting resources and discounts. And I've got a book list there, books that I think every actor should read. Um, I've got a section there on how to find casting directors' details fast and for free. Um, and there's a section there, I won't go into it because it'll give away the discount code for people who aren't members. So it's only for members. But it says save on voiceover training with Gravy for the Brain. You get 25% uh, off your monthly fee for Gravy for the Brain by uh, just being a member of actsonthis.tv. Um, and that's because I was going to set up a site once for voiceover and then I realized Gravy for the Brain existed, and I was like, it's pointless. If I was going to do it, I would do it exactly like those guys have. Um, it's effectively like Acts on This Is, but for the voiceover industry. They do live webinars each week with voiceover people. Um, very, very you know, good, valuable membership. Um, but you, if you're a member of Acts on This.tv, you get 25% off. So uh, don't forget that. Um, definitely. How do I get over first role TV, uh, first TV role nerves? Says Esther, the bubble has burst and and reality is set in. It's funny, isn't it? This happens to so many actors. They get the job that they find the best part of the whole process of getting their first TV job was the call they had from their agent or the casting director to tell them they had the job. The elation they feel by like, yes, I've won the role and the best person for the job. They're on cloud nine. They put the phone in and up down and I've experienced this and then they go inside their head and they go, oh shit. I've actually got to do it now. And then they're like, what if I get on set and I'm not very good? What if I screw it up? What if I forget my lines? And they focus on all the things that could go wrong. What I would suggest is people get really like set on making a paradigm shift in their head where they begin to focus on what could go right. And they begin to focus on how how they wouldn't be there unless you know, they deserve to be there and they were good enough because you landed the role. Um, you focus on enjoying it. The worst thing that could happen, Esther, please don't fall into the trap of going 
really like torturing yourself doing it, walking away and going, oh God, like I robbed myself of an opportunity to enjoy it. Um, you should enjoy it because generally first TV roles as well, they're not the biggest of roles. So, you know, your line shouldn't be too difficult to learn. You might have a page or so of dialogue, a few lines. Um, you know, you've probably learned that anyway for the audition and now you're just going to do it on set. So you shouldn't really have to worry about your lines. Um, you're going to be in a really supportive environment you know, like everyone is going to be lovely. I promise you on the serial dramas and just in TV in general, when you go on set, tell people it's your first role and they will be like, oh, they'll be so excited for you and they will give you like extra support um, and just take it all in. Take it all in. Have a walk around, watch how it's all put together. Ask questions if you're not sure. Um, ask to have another take at it if, you know, you don't feel that you've given it your best. You know, they might go, oh yeah, we've got it. That's great. And you can go, is there any chance? Be brave. I could just have one more because I think I could just give you a little bit more on that. Um, and if they've got time, they'll let you. Sometimes they might not have time, but you'll do a great job anyway because you've got the role. You auditioned, you landed the role. You wouldn't be there if you couldn't do it. So um, yeah, don't rob yourself by focusing on what could go wrong. Focus on what could go right. Get Make the excitement of being there louder than the fear and you'll enjoy yourself. And that's a forever game. That's hard. That's real mindset work. That's real positive psychology work. That's something that you've got to practice every day for every part of your life, not just when you're going into a acting gig, any high pressure environment, you know, you should be working on your mindset so that you focus on the excitement and the joy and the potential of a positive outcome as opposed to, oh God, what if it all goes wrong? Like, it just won't. Nine times out of 10, the, these things that we prophesize and these things that we fortune tell about our future and, oh my God, what if they think this of me and that of me and what if this happens? How many times have you done that and it's never come true? And then you go, oh my God, I just made the last two days so miserable because the thing that I was afraid of happening didn't happen. And it, I, I could have just enjoyed myself. Don't rob yourself of that opportunity. It's uh, it's it's really important. Georgie says, when emailing CDs, uh, that's casting directors for those who are new, with updates after you've already introduced yourself, should you still mention your casting uh, type, playing age, etc., to them or just crack on? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what you can do is you can, it depends if you saved the conversation. So if they reply to your initial email, you can just reply to that email. So they've got it in the chain. It's still worth saying Hey, just reaching out again. We've got an update. Just updating my showreel. Um, you know, here's a new scene. As I mentioned in my last email, I'm a you know mid twenties actress. You know, caring. Uh, you know, maternal type or whatever your 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 type is. Um, you can always recap on it. Yeah, because casting directors are getting thirty emails a day. They're not going to remember every single person. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, just jog their memory. The easier you can make it for them to know who you are. Um, the better. Uh, what info should I add on my showreel slate if I don't have an agent and applying for Spotlight? Should I wait until Spotlight comes through? No. So do it now. So so your your initial opening thumbnail on your showreel should just be a headshot centered in, in uh, portrait, not landscape, center of your screen, your name underneath it that spans no wider than the photo. So if it gets cropped on social media, for instance, as a square, we can still see your face and your name. Um, don't put like your headshot on the right and your name on the left because it just gets cut off and we see half of your face and half of your name as a, as a thumbnail. Um, and then on the last slate, so like the last end card, um, you want to have your name, you want to have a direct number. Um, I would suggest if you're not happy giving out your mobile, you buy a SIM card and you have just like a mobile just for your acting because that's then going to be out publicly in the world. Um, have an email address for people to get in contact with you. Um, and uh, and that's it. That's it for now. Really, you could put your social on there if you wanted. Not, don't overload it. You could put your Twitter. Our industry uses Twitter more than any other social media platform. So you could put your name, number that's just for acting, email that's preferably just for acting, um, and uh, your Twitter, your Twitter, you know, handle so people can go and check out you know other stuff on Twitter if you you're posting about your acting career. And um, Spotlight, by the way, reduced their criteria to join this week by half. It used to be four credits to get on spotlight it's now two professional engagements so that that can be anything like you know a, a independent feature film theater and education or one equity pack contract so that would be literally one tv job then that's an equity contract nearly every tv job's equity so now to get on spotlight one equity contract or two non equity professional roles or even and i don't know the proper ins and outs of this 
If your agent is part of the Personal Managers Association, PMA, they can they can join that after being, I think, an agent for two years. Um, then they can just recommend you a spotlight. As long as your agent is PMA registered, you can get a spotlight with no credits, just a recommendation. So Spotlight have made it easier than ever to get on there. So if you've been struggling to get those four credits and you weren't aware now, you only need two. So uh, you might be against Spotlight if you weren't aware. Um, and the reason I think they've done that, it'd be interesting to look at their accounts. I reckon since they were bought out by that American company, I just reckon they're struggling with cash flow. I think so many actors have been able to, not able after, you know, the last two years to afford their spotlight um, or, you know, they just decided they just want to produce more revenue. Um, I think that's why they've done it. I can't see any other reason. No other reason why they've done that. And I get it. It's a business model, but I think they will have lost a lot of people. Netflix lost. Netflix thought they were going to get 2.5 million new users between January and March this year, the first quarter, 2022. They actually lost 200,000. So I think a lot of people, uh, I've seen it on ads on this. We've had a few members canceling their membership recently and I get it because, you know, times are tough. Um, I, I still think for six quid a week, I would cancel my Spotify over a uh, over ads on this subscription if you want to get more work as an actor or my Netflix. Um, but I know a lot of people don't want to do that. They want to just forget about the world and escape. They don't really want to put in the work. And that's, again, the downfall of a lot of actors. But yeah, um, I think Spotlight have probably gone, hang on a minute, we need to make more money. So let's cut the joining criteria in half. And if you watch your spotlight and that is wrong, let me know. I'd love to know the reason why you've uh, why you've done it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, by the way. It's going to definitely create more competition in terms of people who can put themselves forward for roles. Um, but I think I think casting directors will just end up being a little bit more specific of who they're sending the briefs out to because I think they're going to be more inundated than ever now that more and more people can uh, can get on. Um, last couple of. Uh, Questions. Well, last question I'll have to take, and then we'll have to wrap it up. It is ten o'clock. Uh, let's have a look. What have we uh, we got here? Uh, apologies if I missed uh, I've missed people's stuff tonight. Uh, I know there's loads of comments that have come through. Uh, let's have a look. Have I got any other questions here? Uh, Georgie, we've answered yours. Kanke, we've answered yours. Uh, first year old nurse, we've done Esther. I think we've covered. Excellent. I think we've covered most stuff. Joe, what are you saying there? You put agent, do I chase? What do you mean? Let me know if that was a question for me or if that was maybe just a, uh, a conversation. Oh, you put there, can you do a, vo a session on voiceover? So yeah, if you've not seen the sessions on voiceover I've already done, get over to your members area. I'll just recap for those people. You might have seen these, Joe, but for those people who haven't, um, I've done a few over the years in voiceover. At the very bottom in the members area, the premium membership, you'll see, where is it? Uh, it'll be, oh, it'll be with agents, won't it? Sorry, so it won't be at the bottom. It'll be, let's have a look. Uh, this session here, landing a voiceover, um, launching a voiceover career that lasts with top voiceover agency, the voiceover gallery. They're my agents. That was, I think, a two-hour session with uh, three agents or four agents from my voiceover agency. Um an absolutely invaluable session basically on how to really launch a voiceover career step by step, like a blueprint that basically. Um, apart from that, there's two other features I've done with Peter Dixon from Gravy for the Brain. Uh, I think you'll find those in the features with actors section. So that's uh, this one. I'm going to have to go at the bottom of each section. I'm going to have to go to the, uh, the next page. There's a little link there that says show more. Click on that and it'll show you there's pages and pages and pages. Um, of other stuff but yeah the session with peter dixon i think it was in this one uh let's have a look where oh there's this one as well voice acting for cartoons with lizzie water with sanso joe ruiz and keith wickham lizzie is horrid henry keith is the fat controller from thomas uh the tank um and joe's everything joe does like loads of stuff like dennis the menace and we did a show together called timpo uh, for the BBC. I was this character called Timpo and they were the other three characters in it as well. It was a really great ensemble piece. But I got those guys on to talk about acting for cartoons. If you want to do voice acting, there's no people better to learn from than those guys. They're the biggest, some of the biggest voice actors in this country, full stop. Um, just having a look if we've got, there's, a, there's another session, like I say, with Peter um, that I did. Where is it? It was quite a while ago. It's a podcast. There it is. How to Land Voiceover Work with Voice of the X Factor, Peter Dixon. If you've never seen Peter Dixon before, 
You've just heard his voice on the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. That's what he looks like. He's an awesome guy, dead funny. Um, and I went down to a studio in London and we recorded a, a podcast down there. You can listen to all about how he got into the industry, how it works, how he landed the uh, Britain's Got Talent, how he landed the X Factor, all that sort of stuff. And then there is one more session that I've done, um, which is if I just click on search, I'm just going to search for the word gravy. Um, because you'll find uh, save on voiceover. No, no, not that, not that. Getting the best voiceover training with Peter Dixon, uh, with voiceover man Peter Dixon. That was a session where we look at Gravy for the Brain and what it offers actors and that sort of stuff. And again, members jump on and ask questions about voiceover. So there's those sessions there, Joe, that you'll find in the members area already. Just search for the word voiceover in the premium membership and you'll find those sessions, I'm sure. Um, but I will do if people want specific stuff covering this year. Um, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll find the people that we need to find in order to uh, you know in order to do that, in order to give you that information. Um, David says getting back uh, to normality. We'll see you on Thursday night. Yeah, hopefully I'll see everybody Thursday night. Kate Bone. Um, don't forget uh, this session coming up with Kate. Thursday night, um, she's incredible, the casting associate for um, Nina Gold and for Robert Stern. She's the uh, casting The Crown right now, 7 p.m. Thursday, the 12th of May, if you're watching or listening on the audio experience or on the replay. Um, actonthis.tv um, forward slash live if you want to check out the schedule and get your membership. But yeah, would love to uh, see people there. Um, so thanks for joining. Massively uh, appreciate it. Um, and yeah, hopefully I will see you Thursday night. Those people watching on the replay or if it's after Thursday night, that session with Kate will be in the members area. Everything gets recorded at actonthis.tv. And if you get a membership on the site, you get instant access to it all. Literally within two minutes, if you're watching or listening to this on the replay, you could have access to everything that you, you, we've spoken about tonight and loads more. Um, so do go and check it out. And those people who are already members, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. So I'll wrap it up. I'll play out the um, mashup of Amy Jackson's session for those people who might just be joining us now. This session's in the members area. A great session we held last week with casting director Amy Jackson, all about getting on her casting radar and all the stuff she's casting um, this year and she's cast some absolute massive massive stuff as well so thanks for being here come and join us again on the next one and um have an amazing week believe in yourself go out there ask the world for what you want i promise you life will pay any price you ask of it so many people though are afraid to ask for what they really want so don't be like that get out there ask for what you want and i promise you if you put the work in life will deliver love to you all really appreciate you being here thanks again bye for now a total legend of casting, fresh from co-casting Stephen Merchant's The Outlaws and Apple TV Plus smash hit Suspicion, is casting director Amy Jackson. Amy, you're back after a two-year hiatus. How are you? I started as an actor in your yeah. shoes way back when um, and did that for a bit and decided, you know, it wasn't quite... Um, I, I just didn't have the patience as much as, as you guys probably have. And then I just worked my way up working first of all with Sasha Robertson in commercials yep. um, which she trained me up to learn all the basics about casting and then I was with Amy Hubbard that was my kind of next thing was there for three years three or four years and now we're here I'm gonna play a little bit of the outlaws out this is me you're over here Greg this is you why am I the used condo? Because you're doing the info of spunk and that's a compliment. Now pay attention. As soon as we finish season one, they commissioned season two without it coming out yet. No way, I so, didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Stephen Merchant was so keen to get local Bristolians. If you were an actor wanting to get on your radar, how would you do it? You know, there are always emails and you can email and, and that's a way to do it. But I'd love for you guys to kind of suggest and to know what you are and to be sure, sure and strong of your casting type. What things do you like to see from actors when it comes to tapes and, and in the room? I just need to see that character in front of me and to not even, I don't want to see the acting. Do you think the industry is maybe moving more towards discovery of new people? <laughs> We're not going to have a budget that can allow for all of those characters to be completely yeah. kind of big famous yeah. Mimosa names, you know? I was just wondering um, what your approach is to um, casting people who are um, a newer diverse or have disabilities and things. You have to believe in yourself and believe in everything that you're doing and your talent and, and that you should be there. Uh.